Good afternoon. Welcome to Our Lady of Peace Parish. Through our Lord 
Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her, and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, 
so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord.
and to prepare or rearrange our life according to the Holy Spirit. Everything is going to change. And you feel that, especially in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians that we just heard. It's important to keep in mind that during that time, especially after the ascension of our Lord, and even in Paul's own experience with the risen Lord, the early Christians thought that the second coming or the end of this earthly world was going to happen very soon. Maybe next year, maybe two years, a hundred years from now. Of course, the final judgment hasn't happened yet, but you can see just how real this was for the early church. The whole world has changed, but we're still standing with our dear apostle, St. Paul, in that same position, waiting. We even pray in this liturgy, we wait in the joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We just don't know when the final and ultimate glory of God will come. Now, today, we heard a very interesting gospel passage. This parable of the ten virgins that was told by Jesus just before his passion. We have ten virgins with their oil. Five are wise and five are foolish ones, as Jesus describes them. The wise ones have been waiting and preparing. Their oil stock is ready to see the bridegroom. And this bridegroom is delayed and coming for whatever reason. It's not shared. But regardless, they're ready to go. Then you have the foolish virgins. They're good at waiting, but they're not good at preparing. We hear the foolish virgins say to the wise virgins, give us some of your oil. We have run out of our own. Please give us that oil. And it's in that moment there, you kind of see a spiritual hostage situation taking place. And perhaps you yourself have found yourself in those situations in your life. If you really love me, you're going to do this for me. You're going to put everything aside and you're going to do this for me, if you really love me. Those foolish virgins are telling, not asking those wise virgins, please give us your faith now. Yikes. Give me your faith now. And that's an important insight of faith, my dear brothers and sisters. I can't give you that faith. That's impossible. I can present the faith. You and I can present the faith. We can present our friendship with Jesus Christ. We can accompany individuals on their journeys. But each of us and all of us, we have to be patient and to prepare for the Lord might lead us. To be a Christian is a daily encounter, not a transaction or, as we see again, a hostage situation or anything like that. I'm reminded of a quote from Gandhi. He said, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. Now, you and I 
we've failed in those small moments in our lives. Absolutely. There are others that are not living their baptismal calm. But I have to disagree with Gandhi a little bit here. You and I have met individuals, we have met Christians, who truly live the Beatitudes, who truly live the teachings of Jesus Christ. But again, going back to Gandhi, we can ask ourselves, how are we presenting, living the word of Jesus in our world and in our community, in our workplace? When we do die, God will ask all of us, what did you do with the gifts that I entrusted you with? How did you use those gifts on my behalf? How did you prepare? How did you use your time? Was I living in you and through you? The challenge for all of us is that we're not here to kill time for the second coming. Rather, every day we're to make a presentation or a testimony in this world in all of its joys and struggles. So as we receive the Eucharist today, until then, all of us, the people of God, let us wait and prepare with joyful hope for the glory and light of God.
that the wisdom of God will guide and direct all those who govern. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For blessings on our nation, all our nation's veterans, and for the protection of those who serve in our country's military, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For God's blessings on all married couples, and for Jim and Kathy Lauer as they celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For the repose of the souls of the faithfully departed, and for all the poor souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For Tom Reiner, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Loving Father, secure justice for the oppressed, give food to the hungry, set captives free, and raise up those who are bound down. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we are <laughs> Thank you. 
thee, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. Sin and 
and faith from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
mentally, come at me spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure, and those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, as a gentle reminder, you can exit any of the doors as we leave the church today. We do need a couple volunteers to help us clean and sanitize the church after Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is in. Thank you.